So what exactly is an ND filter and why do these matter for shooting video? Well, in this video, we're gonna be checking out some brand new quartz line ND filters from Polar Pro that also have polarizers built in, explaining what they are, how to use them, and checking out some test footage. Coming up. This video is brought to you by TubeInfluence.com, a one-hour online masterclass on how to grow a highly influential and profitable YouTube channel this year. On this free training, you'll learn the proven strategies and current best practices for growing your subscribers and creating passive income with YouTube. To register for free, just go to TubeInfluence.com. Hey, what's up guys, Sean here with Thick Media, bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. And we're here at NAB Show in Las Vegas, checking out some of the latest tools for creative so you can create better content, better photos, and better videos. And today, we're checking out some Quartzline Polar Pro ND filters. And we actually have one on the camera right now. And the main way that people explain ND filters are like sunglasses for your camera. And the reason is, is we're actually outside. There's a ton of light here, even though we're in the shade, and we're shooting with a really fast lens. It's a 50 millimeter 1.4 lens on a Sony camera from Sigma. And so there's a ton of light out here. And the ND filter on the camera allows us to have smooth motion. Because here's the thing, when you're shooting video, you really want to follow the 180 degree rule. If you step outside like this and you're shooting photography, you could always crank your shutter speed way up to compensate for too much light. But if you're shooting video, and we're shooting in 30 frames a second right now, you wanna follow the 180 degree rule, which means your shutter speed needs to be 60 frames a second. Here's the problem. If you wanna keep your aperture set right and have a blurry background, well, you can't mess with your shutter speed. You'd actually have to change your aperture in video mode to keep smooth motion. How do you fix that? You screw on an ND filter to the end of your lens that allows not as much light to be coming in so you can actually keep your shot perfect every single time. Okay, so Omar just took the ND filter off. The ISO is still at 100. The f-stop is at 2.0, so we still have that blurry background. But here's the thing. To get the exposure right, we had to crank this up to 1500 shutter. So now the motion is going to be a lot different, and it's not going to be smooth. It should be looking choppy. Let me know in the comments right now how I'm looking with these dance moves. All right, so now we just changed the camera settings again, and now the shutter speed is correct again. 180 rule. It's at 60. We're shooting 30 frames a second. But now, in order to get exposure right, Omar changed the aperture. So now it's at f.9, which is cool, but we lose that blurry background a little bit. It was at f.2. This lens goes all the way to f1.4. So if you're shooting video and you want to have that real good bokeh, that nice good ba blurry background, you need to get an ND filter in order to keep the settings right and the motion right. Okay, so now we're back with the ND filter on the camera, back at f.2, shutter speeds at 60, 100 ISO, everything's looking great, the motion's looking great, we've got the blurry background. And here's some of the things to know about ND filters, and specifically some of these from Polar Pro, is that there's also different darkness levels. You know, this lens gets much brighter, maybe there's times when it's even, we're in the shade, we're trying to be, sun's kind of hitting me here, but there are ND filters that have different densities. I'm holding an ND8 in my hand right here. We're shooting with an ND64. This is speaking to the level of darkness that the ND filter produces. Omar actually has a variable ND filter and we're shooting with an A6500 and he can actually show as he changes it, it changes how much light is being let in. Essentially, the combination of the two pieces of glass are affecting that exposure. So you can see how that would be very helpful. So you can make sure your camera settings are exactly how you want them and then control the amount of light coming into your camera with the ND filter. Now another thing to consider when shopping for ND filters and any kind of polarizers or UV filters is the filter size. And so we're shooting with a 77 millimeter lens with the actual filter size here. And there's two options that you can do. You can either get the right ND filters for your lenses, as you should, but then you can also get stepper rings. So some of those stepper rings allow the filter to either fit larger lenses or smaller filter size lenses. So like in our collection, we have different ND filters and then we also have stepper rings so that we can use all of those ND filters on all of our different lenses. So as you build out your gear over time, always be thinking not just about the density of the ND filter, but also about the filter size to fit your lenses. 
Okay, so we've touched on ND filters. Now let's talk about polarizers. And in this quartz line from Polar Pro, they actually have made combinations of some of these. So this is an ND filter on the camera that you're seeing right now, and also a polarizer. Well, what does a polarizer do? Well, it gives you a ring to adjust kind of a gradiated filter that will help you with things like the sky, bringing in the details of the clouds, that will a lot of times increase vibrancy and help you with greens and blues. And really, it takes out reflections and brightness in different shots. So typically, you'd use a polarizer on water or maybe if you want to keep detail in the clouds and things like that when typically the ground and your subject is uh, not as exposed a little bit darker than the really bright sky. So as Omar is twisting this, he's changing the polarization that's in this lens. And what's cool about this again is this is a quartz line from Polar Pro that's an ND and polarizer combo. I'm holding an ND only, so maybe you don't want the polarizer feature actually in the lens, you can do that or you can use one with a combo, or you could also pick up just a polarizer itself and use that for your shots to increase that vibrancy and help with reflections and things like that. So I hope that some of these tips in general about these ND filters and polarizers have been helpful, but I'm holding in my hands a couple of the filters from Polar Pro. Now, by the time you're watching this video, these may or may not be out yet. I actually love this brand, and I've been using their Mavic Pro filters for a lot of drone footage. And one of the things that's great about them, again, is actually the Mavic does not have a controllable aperture. So your motion is always messed with. It's always at 2.8. And so with these various polarizers and ND combos, from Polar Pro, it helps you get the right motion for your drone footage. And the polarizers really help when you're shooting ocean shots. If you want to get those vibrant photos and videos that people get pointing down at the water, their filters have really been super helpful. So if you want to check those out, I'll link those up in the description. But these new ones I'm super excited about because now Polar Pro is coming to standard cameras, right, with the line of filters. And we've been using, right now you're seeing the ND64 with polarizer you know, on the camera that we're shooting with. There's also an ND8 here, and they have a full line of them. These are all 77 millimeters, but they have different sizes, so those are all gonna be coming out. And I've also got an UV filter from them as well, and we didn't really touch on that in this video. And really a UV filter is typically just to protect your um, lens, right, in case you drop it so you don't scratch it. If you scratch the UV filter, you're a lot happier than scratching your expensive lens. But then when it also comes to the price on these, they're gonna come out at varying prices depending on the filter size, the amount of density on the filter itself. But these are gonna be starting at around $70 all the way up to around $250 here in the US. And of course, check link, links in the description for current prices. But you might be asking, Sean, why would I spend so much money on like a UV filter that I put on front of my camera? And here's the thing, you don't want to compromise the piece of glass that you put of in front of your expensive glass, right? So if you're using a lens that costs $500 to $2,500, you don't want to put a cheap, really, you know, throwaway UV filter, ND filter on there because you're going to compromise your shot. All right, so let's sum everything up. Here's the thing. You definitely want to pick up some ND filters and some polarizers and things like that for shooting your videos so you can level up your shots. You could go with any brand, but personally, I'm actually super pumped about this uh, quartz line from Polar Pro. Having used their stuff in the past, talking to the team, they are obsessed with the quality of this glass. Fused Quartz Glass is one of the first brands to do that, which just means that you're going to have a lower reflective index than other brands. You've got lots of the precision coatings and you also have a brass frame so on the frame itself allows for a much smoother threading compared with aluminum so here's the thing these are just meant if you really care about your image because really what you put between your subject and your sensor is really important and if you got a great camera a great lens but you compromise on your filters then you potentially compromise on your shot but I'd love to hear from you if you learn anything in this video and what you think about some of the test examples that we shot with this this ND64PL from Polar Pro. So thanks for checking out this video. Subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't yet. And if you want to check out other videos in our NAB show series, click or tap the screen right there. For another video from Think Media, click or tap the screen right there. Until next time, Think Media is bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. Keep crushing it, and we will talk soon.